A great day to one and all. To my guests on for today, suppose the terms 5 blank 20 form a geometric sequence. And I might ask you, I will ask you, what number should be in the blank? Anyone? Feel free to comment or answer in our chat box if you wish. And if you answered 20 uh, in 5 blank 20, if you answered plus minus 10, then great job. How come plus minus 10 could mean that the middle term could either be 10 or negative 10? Case in point, probably you did by trial and error. If you think that our common ratio is 2, then 5 times 2 will be 10. 10 times 2 will be 20. So you see, it makes these three terms form a geometric sequence. However, how about if your common ratio is negative 2? Then, if you have 5 times negative 2 will give you negative 10. Negative 10 times negative 2 will give you still 20. That's why if you could see, the middle term could either be 10 or negative 10. And this plus minus 10 is referred to as the geometric mean of 5 and 20. And this motivates us for our lesson for today, geometric means. I am Mr. Kim J.C. Ensho, a faculty member of Iloilo National High School Special, Pro Special Program for Science, Technology, and Engineering. And today, I will be discussing with you geometric means and on how to find them. Speaking of geometric mean or geometric means, this would refer to the term or terms between the two given terms of a geometric sequence. For example, if I have here a sub 1, a sub 2, a sub 3, a sub 4, a sub 5, if this forms a geometric sequence, then the first and last terms are referred to as the geometric extremes and all the terms in between them, namely a sub 2, a sub 3, a sub 4, are the geometric means. Take note that the concept of geometric means is applicable if we have a finite geometric sequence, which means to say that there are limited number of terms in this particular geometric sequence. So in this particular given, since there are three terms in between them, so there are three geometric means. It's possible that you are asked of only one geometric mean, two geometric means, three geometric means, and so on. That's why you have to be mindful of the process. In the first example I gave you, I just simply did trial and error. But for now, I will be discussing in detail how to determine the common ratio. And with such, we will be able to determine the geometric means. Take note also that there are various means or methods in finding the, ge in finding the geometric mean. But for now, I will be sticking with one method. Let's have these exercises. Letter A, insert two geometric means between 15 and 960. And for the solution of this, you will be placing two terms between 15 and 960. We don't know what these two terms are, but since 15 is the first number mentioned, so it's understood that 15 is our first term. 15 for uh, one geometric mean and then the second geometric mean 
and 960 here as the last term. It's understood that the first term mentioned is the first term and the last term mentioned is the, the last number after the word end is your uh, last term. So clearly from this, you could actually see that A sub 1 or the first term is 15 and 1, 2, 3, 4, 960 is the fourth term, right? From such, we can see that N here is 4 because we have four terms. And utilizing the explicit form of, uh, of the N term of your geometric sequence, we have A sub N equals A sub 1 R to the N minus 1. I hope that you could still remember this formula. And substituting n, which is equal to 4, then you will have, we will replace all n's by 4. So we have a sub 4 is equal to a sub 1 r to the 4 minus 1. But 4 minus 1 simplifies to 3. That's why... Um, So if you could see, we have a sub 4 equals a sub 1 r to the 4 minus 1 or 3. You could see that from here, we know that a sub 4 is 960 and a sub 1 here is 15. By substitution, we have 960 equals 15 r cubed. Dividing both sides by 15 to isolate the term with the variable. We have 960 divided by 15, that's 64, equals R cubed. And again, this goes back to our lesson last time. Since uh, we have here R cubed, we will get the cube root of both sides. And this leads us to the cube root of 64 equals the cube root of R cubed, which is R. Take note that since your index of the root here is odd, that's why no need to place a plus minus symbol. And we know that the cube root of 64 is 4, which tells us that the common ratio is equal to 4. And therefore, to determine the geometric means from here, we can go back to this one. So 15, a sub 2, a sub 3, 960. To get, remember, a geometric sequence is recursively, uh, you could get the next term recursively by multiplying by the common ratio, right? So with that, 15 times 4 will give you 60. 60 times 4 will give you 240. And if you continue, 240 times 4 will give you 960. So indeed, the common ratio of four makes this one a geometric sequence. But be reminded that we are only after of the geometric means. Is R15 and 960 included? And the answer is no, because 15 and 960 are the last terms. So 15 and 960 are the geometric extremes. We are only after of everything in between. Hence, the geometric means are 60 and 240. If you did answer this one, or if you got answers like this, great job. All right. All right. Let's proceed with the next slide. How about if I'm going to ask you, insert three geometric means between 144 and 9. And since I first mentioned 144, then 144 is the first term and 9 here is the last term. And we are going to place three numbers in between them. So this tells us that we have here 144. The three numbers are a sub 2, a sub 3, a sub 4. And the last term here is 9. This tells us that the first term is 144 
And from left to right, one, two, three, four, five. That nine here is the fifth term. And since we have five terms in this finite geometric sequence, then n is five. Substituting it to the explicit form, we have a sub five is equal to, so we have a sub five equals a sub one r to d, five minus one or four. We could see that a sub five is equal to nine and a sub one is equal to 144. With such, you have nine equals 144 r to the fourth. Dividing both sides by 144, you get 1 16th equals r to the fourth. And so uh, to determine the value of r, we have to get the fourth root of both sides. So we have the fourth root of 1 16th equals the fourth root of r to the fourth, which is r. However, based on what we discussed last time, since the index of our root is 4 and is even, then we have to place a plus minus symbol. Remember, we have to place a plus minus symbol if the index of our root is even. The and if you get the fourth root of a certain fraction, you are taking the fourth root of both numerator and denominator. So R here is plus minus the fourth root of 1, which is 1, over the fourth root of 16, which is 2. Hence, there are two possible values of our common ratio. It's either the, the first value of R sub 1 is 1 half, and the second value is R sub 2, or negative 1 half. And what does having two values of the common ratio mean? It means that there are two possible geometric sequences. Now, for this case, let us take the case if our R is equal to 1 half. If R is equal to 1 half, then from here, 144 times 1 half gives us 72. 72 times 1 half gives us 36. 36 times 1 half gives us 18. If you continue, 18 times 1 half gives us 9. So you see, indeed, the common ratio of 1 half makes these five terms a geometric sequence. Therefore, R equals 1 half is a valid value of the common ratio. How about if your R is the negative of it, which is negative 1 half? So using again the same case, 144 times negative 1 half is negative 72 because positive times negative is negative. Negative 72 times negative 1 half is positive 36. Negative times negative is positive. 36 times negative 1 half is negative 18. And negative 18 times negative 1 half is 9. So clearly, you could see from here, having a common ratio of negative 1 half also satisfies the given. Hence, this tells us that... Uh, if you answered case one and case two separately and wrote them this way, that is considered correct. However, take note, you should not include the 144 and 9. Or if you wish, you may write them as a single expression. How come? Because you could see here, it's just, they just uh, differ. The terms have the same absolute values. So it's just that they differ in sign. So for the first one, this is positive, this is negative. So you could write it as plus minus 72. Here, 36 is positive. Here, it's positive. There's just only one sign. So just write 36. And we have here 18 plus 18. This is positive 18. This is negative 18. That's why you have plus minus 18 there. Hence, the geometric means are plus minus 72 
plus minus 36 and plus minus 18. If you got this, great job. All right. And moving on. Let's talk about mean proportional. When we speak about mean proportional, it is a term between two terms of a geometric sequence. For example, if you have uh, three terms, a sub 1, a sub 2, a sub 3, a sub 1 and a sub 3 are your extremes, and a sub 2 is your geometric mean, right? We could say that a sub 2 is the geometric mean of a sub 1, Okay, I was able to spot an error. Sorry for that. We could say that A sub 1 and A sub 3 are the geometric means, by the way. I mean, A sub 2 is the geometric mean of A sub 1 and A sub 3. Or the mean proportional between A sub 1 and A sub 3. To make the long story short, if you would like to insert only one geometric mean between uh, two terms, then you could say insert one geometric mean between these two terms. Or you could say insert a mean proportional between the first and the last term or between the first and the last uh, and the third term. Let's have this exercise. Insert a mean proportional between 9 and 16. From here, uh, mean proportional, it's just one geometric mean. So we have 9, comma, a sub 2, comma, 16. So there's only one term. You could see here that the first term is 9. And from the left, 1, 2, 3, 16 is the third term. And since there are three terms, so your n has to be 3. Using, again, the explicit form of your geometric sequence, a sub n equals a sub 1 r to the n minus 1. Substituting all n's by 3, we have uh, replacing all n's by 3. We have a sub 3 equals a sub 1 r to the 3 minus 1 or 2. Replacing a sub 3 with 16, and a sub 1 with 9, we have 16 equals 9r squared. Dividing both sides by 9, we have 16 over 9 equals r squared. And we will take the square root of both sides. But since this is 2 here and it is even, so we have to place a plus and minus symbol in be uh, before the square root of 16 over 9. Square root of 16 is 4. Square root of 9 is 3, which tells us that the common ratio is plus minus 4 thirds. So if we have this one, if we go back here, 9, a sub 2, 16. If our common ratio is positive 4 thirds, 9 times positive 4 thirds is positive 12 because 9 divided by 3 that's 3 3 times 4 12 if you adapt the negative 4 thirds 9 times negative uh, 4 thirds will give you negative 12 that's why if you are going to insert only one uh, a, a geometric mean or a mean proportional between 9 and 16 then it has two possible values a plus and a minus and anyway, both of them are correct. I hope you got it as well. All right. I would like you to try this. How about this time if I give you the first three terms of a geometric sequence, but there is a variable involved? For example, if 2x... 5x minus 2 and 20x minus 24 form a geometric progression. Find x. Take note that progression is the other term for sequence. So let's have the solution for this. 
let us recall that in our first few discussions of this topic, remember that if A sub 1, A sub 2, and A sub 3 form a geometric sequence, then the ratio of the second and the first, the second divided by the first, is equal to the ratio when the third is divided by second, by the second. Or in symbols, a sub 2 over a sub 1 equals a sub 3 equals a sub 2, and that common value is your r or common ratio. From here, multi uh, using multiplication property of equality, we will multiply both sides by a sub 1, a sub 2. Others are calling it um, cross multiplication. So a sub 2 times a sub 2 will be a sub 2 quantity squared. It's equal to a sub 1 times a sub 3. That's why remember this. In a geometric sequence, and if you are given three terms, the square of the second term is equal to the product of the first and third terms. I hope you got it. And to apply this principle, you could see here that your first term is 2x, a sub 1 is 2x, 5x minus 2 is, a, uh, a, is your a sub 2, and 20x minus 24 is your a sub 3. Substituting to this equation, we have 5x minus 2 quantity squared equals 2x times 20x minus 24. Simplifying this one, if you are squaring this binomial, remember you have to square the first term. If you are squaring a binomial, square the first term. That's 25x squared. Then twice the product of the first and second terms, 5x times negative 2 is negative 10x times 2 will be negative 20x plus the square of the last term, which is 4. Equals, distributing this, 2x times 20x will be 40x squared. 2x times negative 24, it's negative 48 x and for that combining like terms uh, in this case i subtracted both sides by 40x squared i also added both sides by 48x and i arrived to negative 15x squared plus 20x 28x plus 4 equals 0 of course by combining like terms multiplying both sides by negative 1 uh, to make the leading coefficient be equal be a positive number, we have 15x squared equals negative 28x plus 4 equals 0. And this is factorable into 15x plus 2 times the quantity x minus 2 equals 0. By the zero property of multiplication, we have to equate each factor to 0. And such, 15x plus 2 equals 0 gives us x sub 1 as negative 2 fifteenths. x minus 2 equals 0 gives the second value of x, which is 2. But the thing is, which of these two values satisfy the equation? Is it just one of them, both of them, or none of them? Let's take the first case of having x equals negative 2 fifteenths. Substituting negative 2 fifteenths here, 2 times negative 2 fifteenths will give you negative 4 fifteenths. 5 times negative 2 fifteenths minus 2 is negative 8 thirds. 20 times negative 2 fifteenths minus 24 will give you negative 80 over 3. You can verify this with your calculators. Now, is there a common ratio? If you could check, if you divide negative 8 thirds by negative 4 fifteenths, you will get 10. If you will get the negative 80 thirds divided by negative 8 thirds, you will also get 10. Hence, you have a common ratio of indeed 10 and indeed negative 2 fifteenths will make 
these three terms form a geometric progression. How about if x is 2? By substitution here, 2 times 2 will be 4. 5 times 2 will be 10 minus 2 will be 8. 20 times uh, 2 will be 40. 40 minus 24 will give us 16. 8 divided by 4 is 2. 16 divided by 8 is also 2. So you see, we have here a common ratio of 2. So you could see that there are indeed two possible values of x, namely negative 2 fifteenths and 2 for this case. Take note, even though you got two values of x, I still encourage you to check on them if they would indeed satisfy your equation. Because chances are, there might be instances that you got that value correctly, but might not satisfy the equation. And those are what we call extraneous variables. Extraneous variables uh, could be taken by algebraic means, but may not satisfy the original. So better check. And if you have questions or clarifications, feel free to reach me in my social media accounts, or you can comment them in our comment section below. With that, I leave you this activity on pages 52 to 54 of our book. The deadline of this will be on October 14, 2022, which is a Friday. And do these items on your notebook alone, namely 1, 3, 11, 15, 18, 20, 21, 24, 33, 37, 51, 53, 55, 60, 63. Only a small number of items. Kidding aside. I hope you got this. I hope you understood our lesson for today and I wish you all the best and I wish you all joy and happiness. But above all this, I wish you all love in everything that you do. With that, thank you very much and a great day to one and all.